In this section, we will discuss elements of design in bonsai art as they apply to coniferous, deciduous, and broadleaf evergreen bonsai. While art is inherently subjective, there are some common objective threads that permeate artistic endeavors. This is true in sculpture, painting, music, and of course, in bonsai as well. Understanding line, movement, directionality, asymmetry, and flow, as well as the steps to applying these concepts to raw or developed material, is key to creating quality bonsai art. More broadly, design in any capacity, including in bonsai art, is based on the values imposed upon the work by the artist, and those values are influenced by larger external factors, including but not limited to one's culture, living environment, and natural surroundings. While bonsai has become a global art form in the 21st century, its foundational aesthetic remains rooted in Japanese aesthetic principles. To better understand contemporary bonsai design in the Japanese context though, let's take a look at some of the larger influences on, and threads of, modern bonsai design in Japan. In Japan, there are a number of approaches to coniferous bonsai design, each reflective of the individual artist, but all influenced by the larger cultural context in which they are realized. That is to say, while there are common design threads apparent in coniferous bonsai design in Japan, to the trained eye, subtle differences in approach by individual artists can be observed. Branch placement, pad creation, and angle selection all follow a common design narrative, but nuanced differences between artists remain observable and add to the interest of bonsai as art in Japan. Each of those nuanced differences stems from a deeper recognition that bonsai is an additive, incremental art form, meaning that a tree's life as a bonsai is part of a longer, evolutionary process that requires an understanding of horticultural science, the limitations of physical stimuli applied to plants, and the continual growth and desiccation process of branches. Over centuries, horticultural practices in Japan have been honed through the process of kaizen, or continual improvement, to yield what is today the highest standard in bonsai art in the world. Everything from selection of leaf size and foliage type, to pruning techniques and wire application is born from this principle. In this tutorial, I will illuminate that principle and the larger cultural threads of coniferous bonsai design, as well as my own personal approach to styling coniferous bonsai, as influenced by my near decade of experience in Japan at Kokaen Nursery under Master Keiichi Fujikawa. When designing a coniferous bonsai, there is a general process utilized to determine the tree's front, angle, branch placement, line, flow, and directionality. This process is largely influenced by value judgments regarding composite design, and those value judgments are themselves influenced by the larger cultural context in which contemporary bonsai art exists in Japan. So where do we begin the design process? The first step involves identifying the desirable characteristics of the tree. The word desirable here implies subjective value judgment, and this is important to understand when discussing the following list of characteristics in coniferous bonsai design. As a general rule of thumb in design, start at the beginning, which in bonsai means start at the bottom. One of the most desirable characteristics in bonsai design is a strong, wide base or surface root structure, also known as nebari. Upon first analyzing a new piece of plant material, whether it be raw stock or an already well-developed tree, start by rotating the plant to find the view that either exposes the widest base or the most radial surface root structure. A strong, wide base or a radial surface root structure that firmly grasps the ground provides a visually stable foundation upon which to build the remaining structure of the bonsai. In the event that a coniferous bonsai does not possess either of those characteristics, it is possible in some instances to utilize various techniques such as air layering and root grafting to remedy the problem. 
These subjects will be discussed later in this tutorial. Moving further up the tree, search for the front that displays the most movement in the primary line of the trunk. In general, more movement equals more value, so choose a front view that exposes the most or most interesting movement in the trunk. In coniferous bonsai design, one of the most desirable characteristics is shadi, or deadwood, found on the trunk, as these features add to the overall story of the tree, where it grew in nature, the elements to which it was exposed, the years of battling against those elements, and its ability to persevere in spite of its situation. When choosing a front, identify areas of deadwood and angle those areas towards the viewer. After finding the widest base or most radial surface root structure, trunk line with the most movement, and shari along the trunk, the next step is to identify the best compromise between each of these elements. Perhaps that means angling the tree in such a way that hides a portion of the nabari in favor of exposing a more dramatic trunk line or interesting portion of the shari, or vice versa. Keep in mind that subtle rotation or angle change can dramatically affect the final visual outcome of a bonsai's design, so carefully assess the tree's position when attempting to expose visually positive characteristics to the viewer without overcompromising. The next step involves identifying the flaws or undesirable characteristics of the tree and finding ways to eliminate or disguise those areas. Again, let's start at the bottom of the tree. The area of the trunk located between the nabari or surface root structure and the first bend in the trunk or the primary first branch is known as the tachiagari in Japanese. In many instances, this portion of the trunk will appear perpendicular relative to the soil surface. While some bonsai styles, such as chokan or formal upright style, necessitate a perpendicular tachiagari and primary line, a majority of bonsai designs seek to eliminate both perpendicular and parallel lines in the tachiagari at the base of a tree and in the total primary line of the trunk. To do so, this requires that the tree be tilted on an angle in one direction or another. But just how much angle is appropriate? Well, this depends on the desired visual outcome of the design. That is to say, do you wish to evoke a calmer feeling in the viewer, or do you wish to make the viewer slightly uneasy? Or is there another emotion that you wish to bring forth in the viewer's mind? Whatever the case may be, the planting angle chosen for the tree will certainly add to the total visual effect of the final composition, and should therefore be carefully selected by the designer. With regards to this particular discussion though, at the very least, the tree should be angled to a degree that all parallel and perpendicular primary lines are visually eliminated. Inverse taper is another flaw that is commonly found in plant material, both in nursery stock and in raw yamadori from the mountains. Choosing a front that either hides or minimizes the visual appearance of inverse taper is key in bonsai design. Keep in mind though that in some rare instances, inverse taper can be utilized as an endearing characteristic in bonsai design. Ideally, avoid choosing a front that exposes a pigeon-breasted view of the trunk, but rather identify a trunk line that moves laterally. Portions of the trunk that protrude directly towards the viewer will often appear visually straight when viewed from the tree's chosen front. Slight rotation of the tree, however, will often turn those boring features into interesting primary lines with movement. This brings us to the final piece of the design puzzle, branch placement and apex creation. The final design of a bonsai must be visually balanced vis-a-vis -vis the placement of branches and apex. The placement of primary, secondary, and tertiary branches, as well as the apex, will determine not only the balance, flow, and directionality of the tree, but it is key in framing positive characteristics and hiding undesirable areas of the bonsai. Let's look at each of the following design elements in more detail. All bonsai have directionality and flow, 
In other words, all bonsai move either to the left or to the right. The determining factor in the directional movement of a bonsai, however, is not solely dictated by the overall directionality of the trunk. Rather, directional movement is determined by a combination of features, including trunk movement, branch placement, and apical orientation. In principle, the directional movement of the trunk, the placement of the first primary branch, and the orientation of the apex as an average of the entire tree will dictate the directionality of the bonsai. In other words, if the trunk on average moves to the right, the primary first branch is located on the right side of the trunk and the apex is oriented to the right of the tree's central axis of symmetry, then that tree can be said to have rightward directionality. In some cases, the trunk of the tree might be oriented in a manner opposite to that of the primary first branch and apex. The dynamic tension created between the opposition of the primary trunk line and the movement of the first branch versus the apical balance provides a unique visual experience to the composition. On average though, it is the balance of those three main elements, trunk directionality, placement of the primary first branch, and apical orientation that ultimately determines the overall directionality of a bonsai. In addition to affecting directionality, branch placement is key to accentuating visually positive elements of a bonsai. That is to say, branches should be utilized in a manner that creates a proverbial picture frame around the most visually appealing aspects of a given tree. For example, if a tree possesses beautiful shari or an interesting trunk curvature, branches should be wired and placed in a manner that directs the viewer's eye to those areas. We will delve deeper into the mechanics of this subject later in this tutorial. Next, let's take a look at apical orientation. One common trope in bonsai circles is that the apex of the tree should be situated over the top of the tree's base to create said visual balance. This, however, is an overgeneralized guideline that, in practice, very seldom occurs. While it is true that one way to bring visual balance to the design of a bonsai is to position the apex in such a manner, in reality, it is often difficult, if not impossible, to do so. What is more often the case is that balance is created via a combination of branch placement and the position of the apex relative to the angle and base of the tree. All of these design elements bring us to the larger discussion in bonsai design of asymmetry. Asymmetrical design is what gives a bonsai its directionality, it's what provides visual interest to the composition, and what forces the viewer's eye to move in directions desired by the tree's designer. Asymmetry can be accentuated to a larger or lesser degree depending on the tree's angle position and placement of branches and apex relative to the tree's central axis of symmetry. Asymmetrical design aspects will be brought to life in the case studies found later in this tutorial. Many of the design elements discussed in the previous section also apply to deciduous bonsai design including aspects of asymmetry, directionality, primary lines, balance, and movement. However, there are some key differences in design approach between coniferous and deciduous bonsai. In the previous section, we discussed the necessity of understanding the time scale necessary for developing bonsai in general, and coniferous bonsai specifically. This understanding is even more pertinent when developing deciduous plant species as bonsai. Why is this exactly? It has everything to do with what we place value on in deciduous bonsai design. Let's begin this discussion by assessing both the desirable and undesirable features in deciduous bonsai.